we've had a lot of people dying, a lot of people getting sick, and a lot of people were panicking, and a lot of people were saying, we really need to know what's going on because nobody else is, is handling this for us. And I thought there were uh, a group of people who were just brilliant, you know, um, people from the Treatment Action Group in New York and Project Inform in San Francisco, and there were people in ACT UP. Everybody had a different role, basically, but I think people, th there was a lot of disagreement early on you know, between different factions of the community. We had, they, they were the genesis of the FDA patient representative program. They wanted a place at the table. Um, we managed to make that happen. And then I think um, in the beginning, we had as many as four different patient representatives because people were saying, well, this person doesn't represent our point of view. And, uh, you know, there were, there were points of view of, got to move forward at any cost, you have to be very cautious, you have to move slowly, you have to know how to put these drugs together, and you need to know what the effects are so you can control and manage them. So there were different factions who had different points of view. <clears throat> I think we had a terrific commissioner, David Kessler, at the time, was very open to meetings, so we could set meetings up directly with the commissioner. People would explain how FDA worked and how clinical trials worked, and you know, people would come in, people still do, you should do a clinical trial like this. And Dave Feigl was the head of the um, antiviral group, and he would say, well, you know, they did clinical trials like that 30 years ago in, in cardiac uh, medicine, and here's what we found out was missing from this trial design. Because I think people think of it more simplistically than it really is. And there's so many things that show up at the end that you go, boy, I wish we had designed this differently to get this answer, or we have an answer that's, that's kind of questionable now because we didn't, we didn't really zoom in on this. And I think they, they picked up very well on that, and they started to just learn about clinical trial design, but also see where the weaknesses were in clinical trial design. And I think that they brought a tremendous thing to the agency by saying people cheat in these trials because you're, you're pushing people into such limited uh, opportunities. And, you, and somebody has to die in one arm to show that the other arm is more effective. And that you need to give people options or else they're not going to stay in that trial and not do anything. They're going to they're gonna take surreptitious you know, therapeutics. And um, I think that really changed the way the trials are done. You know, that there are times when you need a placebo, but there's also you know, a lot of trials that are done, most trials are not placebo controlled in, in uh, serious diseases now, but they're standard of care. There's always a control, so you can see what the active ingredient is really doing by itself. And, um, you know, they came up with, with ideas for a lot more expanded access, and I think treatment INDs really grew out of what they were trying to get to. Parallel track was another thing that they had come up with. It didn't pan out. It was not very practical. But the treatment IND really is. And um, I think that they're responsible for a lot of real forward movement. I think uh, accelerated approval might have been something that was bubbling a little bit on the stove, but they turned up the heat, made it happen a lot faster. I remember um, being in labeling negotiations. FDA negotiates on the labeling with the drug company. Um, and, and the label determines how it, the product can be advertised. So it's a very important thing for the company. So um, I remember one where we had an AIDS activist in the room and everybody's arguing over the wording on this label. And they get through all of the, the really difficult labeling. <laughs> and the, uh, you know, they said, oh, okay, we'll, we'll just take care of the rest you know, next, we'll just do it over the phone or something. And the, the AIDS activist said, no, you don't. I know what you guys are like. You're going to say, let's do this later, and it'll be weeks or months before this gets done. So we're not leaving this room until we do it. And everybody did it. And I, I was very impressed. I thought, that's great. <laughs>